Hi, and welcome to this section of the Calculus 3 Tutor. And in this section, we're going to tackle the topic of the fundamental theorem of line integrals, OK? Uh, it has a kind of a high, you know, high and mighty sounding title to it. But really, what it's going to be is it's going to be an analog um, to uh, the fundamental theorem of, of integrals, the fundamental theorem of calculus that you learned way back at the beginning of Calculus 1. So what, what you're going to, you know, you remember way back when from Calculus 1 when you learned about the concept of an integral, just a regular old plain Jane integral. What you learned is if you take the integral of a function, you'll get back uh, some other function. So, for instance, the integral of x squared, you're going to get back something else. And when you're doing a definite integral over those two endpoints, the fundamental theorem of calculus told you that you just take the integral and then you evaluate from the uh, upper limit, from, from the lower limit to the upper limit. And you know how to do that with your subtraction. You've been doing integration for a long time. That's the fundamental theorem of calculus. This section is going to look very similar to it. It's just that it's going to deal with these uh, line integrals. It's going to be the fundamental theorem of line integrals. So you're actually going to see something very similar to what you're already very comfortable with from Calculus 1. Now, to get from point A to point B to show you and get you comfortable with everything, I've got to walk you step by step through some things and, and take you down a, a, a trip down memory lane from Calculus 1 a little bit. Let me do that. I think it'll be clear once we do that, okay? So remember from Calculus 1, okay, long time ago, what you learned was the following. If you take the integral from A to B, regular old integral, okay, and if you're integrating some function, x dx, just let me write it down and, and you'll see what I'm talking about here, uh, then what you're going to get back uh, when you actually do this, you have to evaluate the integral, you get a function back, you evaluate it at the limit B, and then you subtract off evaluating at the limit A. This is a little different than you may have seen it written before, um, but what I'm really getting at here is you're integrating some function. Now this prime is a derivative. What, what you're really saying is if you integrate the derivative of something, okay, then what you're going to get back is the original function and you evaluate it from B uh, to A. I mean, I think if you stare at that long enough, you'll understand. If you integrate the derivative of something, then what you're going to get back is F and you evaluate that from B to A and, and that's the answer, okay? So as an example, just to beat it into the ground, if you evaluate something from A to B, the function is 2x dx, way back from calculus 1, okay? Um, how do you do that? Well, what's the integral of this? It's going to be uh, 2 halves x squared from a to b, which is, just doing the math here, x squared from a to b. So notice what we did is the original function f is x squared. The derivative of this is, is uh, 2x. So we really integrated the derivative of this function. Okay, we integrated the derivative uh, of this function. So we know, we know that if f of x is equal to x squared, we know that if f of x is equal to x squared, then f prime of x is equal to 2x. Okay, we know that. And these are just real simple derivatives that we, we just work with all day, and we, we know that that's the case. And we know that to evaluate this integral, what we're doing is we're taking, uh, evaluating at b, and we're subtracting uh, off at a, which is exactly what you do right there. Now, notice that you really don't have to do any integration here, because if you, well, let me back up and say it a different way. If I'm giving you 2x and I tell you to integrate it, you can actually go through the rules of integration, which you know how to do, which is what we did here, and arrive at this and, and evaluate that. But what if I told you ahead of time, okay? What if I told you ahead of time that the function you're integrating was actually the derivative of this other function? What if you knew that already? And then effectively you would know the answer to the integral, okay? And you wouldn't actually have to, to go through the math to actually, you know, do trig substitution or anything else. If, if you knew that this was the derivative of some other function already, then you really wouldn't have to do any integration. You would just write the function down, evaluate the limits of integration, um, and go, go about your business. Just to break it down even, even more, if you knew that you had a function f of x, and if you took the derivative and you get 2x, if you knew ahead of time, if you had like a table of, of these antiderivatives or something, if you knew this was true, these two things were true ahead of time, then you would always know that if you integrate 2x, which is the derivative, if you integrate this, you're always going to get x squared back. And then you could always do the limits of integration. And I'm saying this over and over again because it's actually going to be really important. If you know ahead of time, two pairs of functions, one of which is a derivative of the other, and you integrate that, that derivative function right here, 
then you really don't you really you really wouldn't have to actually go through all the rigmarole of doing the integration by partial fractions or whatever technique. If you knew that this was the derivative of something, then all you would have to do is write that function down and evaluate it from from the bottom to the top. Okay? Remember that, that's going to be real important here. So let's recall, okay, let's recall that the gradient. Okay, of a regular old function f of x comma y comma z is a vector field. Okay, this is just studying the gradient. We've done that uh, a long time ago. What is the uh, what does this vector field look like? Well, you're taking the gradient of a function. Okay, and you should remember back from from that section when we did it. What you're doing is you're taking the partial derivative of f with respect to x 